Today, the ICA has the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Chalemsky, Professor and Chair of Neurology at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Hi, uh, my name is Tom Chalimsky, and uh, I owe a fair amount to the Interstitial Cystitis Association. Um, I'll just give you a little pinch of history. I really had never heard of interstitial cystitis, probably until 2005, 2006. Uh, I was an autonomic neurologist studying uh, autonomic nervous system disorders like diabetes, Parkinson's disease, Shy Drager syndrome. Uh, and uh, then uh, a veterinarian by the name of Tony Buffington, that I think many of you know and love, uh, came to my office and said, I've got some interesting cats and I want to show you some data. So uh, that started a collaboration. Uh, in 2008, uh, he and I and a urologist by the name of Ray Rackley, who does a lot of interstitial cystitis, applied for a grant from the Interstitial Cystitis Association of America, uh, the Fishbein. Um, a grant uh, group and uh, we got it the second year and this was to study uh, the interrelationship between interstitial cystitis and other autonomic disorders that we had uh, found seemed to run together including uh, irritable bowel syndrome, migraine headache and not just to study it in patients but to study it in family members. So we did that and uh, that paper is now coming out but the good news was that that collaboration then and that grant from the Interstitial Society Association led to further work um, and to the funding of an NIH grant uh, for about three and a half million dollars which is still going on today in which we're trying to understand in more depth how the autonomic nervous system affects uh, the bladder, how the bladder affects the autonomic nervous system and really how painful bladder syndrome uh, interrelates with the autonomic nervous system. So um, from that study what I can tell you so far is that we found uh, some good news and, and both are expected. So we found that the structure of the autonomic nervous system so far, this is on about uh, 50 patients or so, the structure is fine. And But we've also found that the function of the autonomic nervous system, that is how it's communicating with the body and what it's telling the body that is abnormal. So let me explain how normal physiology works. When you're lying flat, the sympathetic nervous system is at rest, meaning that your blood vessels are relaxed uh, and your body tone is relaxed. Then when you stand up, if we measure the output uh, using, for example, how much uh, the nerves fire off or how much norepinephrine is produced, then the total output doubles. Uh, and what we found in patients who have interstitial cystitis is that they start where the healthy controls end up. So the healthy controls standing, of course, have doubled what they do. Interstitial cystitis patients at baseline start where the healthy controls end. And it tells us that the brain is constantly overworking in patients with interstitial cystitis. Other areas that we don't have answers to yet, but that we're investigating are, where does interruption in sleep come from? Is it, be is it because patients have to get up to urinate, or are, is their sleep interrupted for other reasons, and then they have to urinate? Um, and um, uh, other areas we're looking at are the guts, so we think that it, the painful bladder syndrome extends beyond the bladder, and is a disorder involving the entire uh, really the entire nervous system, including the upper gut, and so we're investigating that as well. So, uh, skipping forward to, I guess, where my thinking has come, I now think of interstitial cystitis as part of a larger disease affecting the entire nervous system. And the parts affected include sometimes the body, because patients have fibromyalgia, diffuse pain, most of the time sleep, very often the upper guts, as in having trouble swallowing, trouble handling foods. Very often the lower gut, as in having irritable bowel syndrome. And very often the autonomic nervous system, as in being lightheaded or having trouble walking or standing. Why would this be a system affecting the entire body? Because I think maybe we have it wrong. Maybe uh, painful bladder syndrome is really not in the bladder. 
it's really in the parts of the brain that control the bladder and then it's projected down to the bladder. So in a person's mind, if the part of the brain that controls the bladder is having trouble, how would they be able to distinguish that from the bladder itself? The part of your mind that controls the bladder tells you about your bladder. So if it's lying to you about your bladder, how, how would you be able to figure that out? This is very important because if the problem is in the bladder itself, then we should be focusing on the bladder. But we've done that for 20 years and haven't found a lot. There's Elmiron, which helps some people, but that's about it. Uh, if the problem is actually up in the parts of the brain that control the bladder, then, the, uh, then we should be focusing on the brain, which is where the direction we're taking right now in terms of understanding this disease better. Based on your research, what advice can you give to interstitial cystitis patients? With interstitial cystitis, as with all chronic pain issues, the three most important things are regular exercise, a good night's sleep, and making sure that you're not attending to pain as in taking pain medications, but attending to pain as in making sure you're optimizing the function in your life. And I'll quote Dennis Turk who said, uh, pain is not in our brains, pain is not in our bodies, but pain is in our lives. And so we have to really pay attention to that. And I want to thank again the Interstitial Societies Association for getting me started on this direction, which I would have never taken if that had not been possible. Thank you, Dr. Chalensky.